One of the fastest growing sports in Australia, and certainly one of the most spectacular ones, to see at least, is hang gliding. We've had several people write to us and ask us to show hang gliding. This one comes from Scott Tucker from Glen Waverley in Victoria, who says, I think this sport would be his most exciting and spectacular to watch. And he asks us to take a look at hang gliding. To film hang gliding, we've come to Catherine Hill Bay in New South Wales, just north of the town of Wyong, where a group of keen hang glider pilots have offered to demonstrate the art and allow us to mount lightweight cameras on the gliders during flight. The collapsible gliders are assembled in about 10 minutes on the crest of a hill. And with a stiff sea breeze blowing, the pilots launch themselves by simply running down the hill until airborne. Learners simply glide downhill, skimming a few metres off the ground. This kind of practice must be kept up for months until the pilot has enough control to begin soaring to greater heights. Landing, of course, is the risky part, but provided great care is exercised, the touchdown can be as light as a feather. There have been fatal accidents with hang gliders, and in America, the average is two deaths a week from hang gliding. The Australian record is much better, and is probably due to the fact that here a great deal of time has been spent by those involved in hang gliding to encourage newcomers to first learn the fundamentals of simply gliding down hills before progressing to greater things. Control of the glider is a learned skill, but the methods of control are simple enough, as explained by Barry Nancaro. Well, the main part of the kite now is your A-frame, which you sort of control over the whole kite. It's your, your centre of gravity up here, and in actual fact, you push the bar out to, or in, to get you up and down. What you're doing is not so much moving the bar, but moving your own body weight. So when you push the bar out, your body weight goes back, and the kite pivots up from that point. Now, if you want to go, go down, you pull the bar in. In other words, you bring your weight forward, which pivots the kite downwards. Now, turning is virtually a similar movement, only done sideways. To turn left, you put your weight over the side here, pulling that way, which, once again, pulls your weight to the side, brings the kite down on your left, and the same for the right. Now, to keep you in the kite, of course, you don't just, you're not just sort of hanging onto that bar down there. You're held in by your harness, which is made out of good, solid seatbelt material. And of course, around your legs, etc. I won't do it up because it takes too long. Around there, and the big point, of course, remember, to clip that in your carabiner, like so. And that way, you're in for good, so, except when you, if you want to get out in a hurry, of course, that's a quick release mechanism, like that, so you can get out if, if you ever need to, to mainly if you sort of land in the water or something. Chris McDonald, who manufactures hang gliders for a living, prepares for a flight with our cameras mounted on the glider. The wind is strong and with the nearby cliff face offers ideal conditions for soaring free as a bird on the upcurrent over the water. Freedom is what man has dreamt of for centuries. Leonardo da Vinci invented flying machines that were very close to the modern hang gliders. But it has only been since 1948 when Francis Rogalo, an aeronautical research scientist working with NASA in the United States, that the kite style of glider came into existence. Australians are credited with pioneering hang gliding as a sport.
has finally gained the ability to imitate the birds. Those that have taken it up say that the thrill and excitement that come with the total freedom of the sky and wind is unsurpassed. To the observer, hang gliding is a graceful, majestic thing to watch. Our thanks to Scott Tucker, who asked us to film it.